Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites, apologize! No. Anyway, welcome to Season 4 of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Oh man. On today's episode, we will explore a brief history of Flash Thompson before getting into our discussion. From high school bully to war hero, this has been the road so far. Eugene Flash Thompson first appeared in Amazing Fantasy 15, the same issue Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, first appeared. In high school, Flash primarily bullied Peter Parker, who he dubbed Puny Parker. Flash was an all-star football player, the mostly cool guy in school, and even had a few of the girls that Peter had crushes on always around him. In many ways, Peter wished he could be like Flash, minus the bully part. Physical abuse and verbal abuse were Flash's arsenal making him a constant source of humiliation in Peter's life. Then, Peter got his spider powers and fought back, causing Flash to back off. Flash later revealed that his abuse towards Peter stemmed from Flash having an abusive father growing up. Peter forgave him, and the two became friends in college. Peter also learned something else about Flash Thompson. Flash was a big supporter of Spider-Man. Flash was the first person to start a Spider-Man fan club, and he even criticized J. Jonah Jameson and some of the people of New York City for calling Spider-Man a menace. Flash may have bullied Peter Parker in high school, but he was also Spider-Man's biggest fan. He was inspired so much by Spidey's heroics that it led to Flash Thompson joining the United States Army. In the original continuity, Flash went off to fight in Vietnam, but over the years, that changed as characters in comics don't exactly age like the rest of us. After coming back from war, Flash sank into depression and alcoholism. Having trouble getting out of his rut, Norman Osborn, recently having returned from the dead himself, offered Flash a job at his company. Slowly getting his life back together, Flash started to fall for Betty Brandt, an old colleague and crush of Peter Parker's. Though Flash and Betty had a rocky relationship at times, they remained very much in love. Little did Flash know, Norman only hired him to get at Peter Parker. When Flash was at his happiest, with so many good things going for him, Norman kidnapped Flash, who was now over a year sober at this point, and forced alcohol down his throat. After a few bottles of alcohol were consumed by Flash, he was placed into a vehicle by Norman Osborn and was crashed into his and Peter's old high school. Flash was in a coma for months. Betty was by his side the entire time, as was Peter when he could be. When Flash awakened from his coma, he still was dealing with a damaged brain and could barely speak or move. Restricted to a wheelchair, Flash lived with Peter Parker, who acted as Flash's caretaker for a while. Despite not being the best caretaker due to having to be Spider-Man every day, Peter had help from Betty and Aunt May in caring for Flash. Soon after, Flash began talking again, then moving, and eventually walking on his own. For the second time in his life, Flash fought to get his life together and to get back on his feet. With few options to find work and patches of memories missing, Flash struggled for a while in finding his place in the world. His relationship with Betty was hard to rebuild, and his friendship with Peter even took a few steps back. Remembering that he was in the military, Flash answered the call when the US military rang him up, looking for active soldiers to fight in Iraq. Once again, Flash left his friends behind to be a hero and fight for his country. He still wanted to be like Spider-Man, and one day, he would become just that. But before he could reach his dream, there was still a lot of hell left for Eugene Flash Thompson to go through. And all that brings us to Amazing Spider-Man number 574, uh, which was written by Mark Guggenheim and drawn by Barry Kitson. And this came out uh, almost a decade ago, I guess now, and uh, it's a great issue. It's a single issue that kind of picks up right where that little history video that we made for our intro leaves off. So, you know, Flash, after he's gone through all this stuff in his life, he's now joined the military once again, joined the army, and he has uh, been sent off to the Iraq War. And that's what this issue is. It's a standalone issue, and it's all about Flash Thompson. There is some references and, and visual aids to like Spider-Man um, to kind of keep the Spider-Man theme going. And I thought what they did with this issue was pretty interesting, actually, or with the way they intercut things and they have Flash, you know, uh, doing things. And then like, you know, in present day in the military or in the flashback, I guess, because the book starts off and it's in uh, Lonstuhl, Lonstuhl, I believe how, in, in Germany. Um, and it's December. It's the Iraq war. It's day like 2100 and something. And uh, and Flash is kind of in bed. He's, uh, you know, resting in a hospital and he's got like a, a Walkman on and he's listening to an iPod that has music on it that 
Pete sent him, uh, you know, Peter Parker. And it, there's like a get well card next to him or it says season's greeting. So, so Peter doesn't know that, uh, that Flash is in the situation he's currently in. And we don't either. We're watching this. We're like, okay, he's, he was injured, I guess. So he's sitting there in a hospital bed. He's listening to the song and he's kind of enjoying it. And it's like, I think it's a Billy Joel song or something. And, uh, and he's, you know, just kind of absorbing that. And that's where we see him. And so, and there's other patients around him. So we're kind of pulled in like abruptly. We're like, wait, what's going on? Why is Flash in the hospital? You know, what happened to him? Um, we don't, like the way it's drawn and the angles and stuff is like, you know, to, to hide certain things. Um, but you don't really pick up on that right away. You don't realize that they're hiding stuff. And I think that's a, a tribute to the writing, you know, for sure, but definitely the art from Barry Kitson, you know, how, because trying to frame things in a scene and try to hide something without making it look like you're hiding something, but also, you know, building up to the reveal of it, uh, that's not always easy to do, especially in comic books. In movies, there's different ways you can cheat it, and you kind of have that avenue with art, but that depends on how good the artist is, and Barry shows that he is a phenomenal artist by doing just that, by directing these scenes without you thinking, um, you know, the, the obvious, you know, something that you're going to find out at the end. Uh, so, uh, so in this issue, they do a really good job building up what exactly is Flash's injuries. Um, and most of you who have, you know, uh, know the story and everything, you already know where this is going. But those, you know, those of you who don't, that's what I wanted to make this first episode on, for, you know, getting back into the Venom vlog, is I wanted to focus on Flash Thompson and who he was and bring him up to the point that, you know, right here this issue i wanted to talk specifically about this issue for a few minutes because i didn't want to glaze over it i didn't want to just kind of you know add it into the history part and just kind of go over it in like 30 seconds i feel like it's worth diving into this because there's a interesting discussion that could be had here and i'd love to hear your opinions on this issue uh but what this issue is during you know after a brand new day it was like Spider-Man made a deal with Mephisto, you know, we know all that stuff. And, and so now everyone forgot that Peter Parker's Spider-Man. Nobody really knows that anymore. And uh, and so that's kind of in that ballpark. And there was like Gail Guggenheim and Dan Slott, I think, were like the three brain trust writers around this time. And uh, and so they would sit, you know, together, email each other, work with Steve Wacker, the editor, and they would, uh, you know, figure out the plots and stories of the books that they were going to tell. And Mark Guggenheim wanted to tell this one. and uh, And I think it was maybe from Steve Wacker. I can't remember where the idea originated from because in the back of this issue, there's a, a, a news, the newsletter column where you send in your, your letters and stuff. There's a great story in there from Steve Wacker talking about meeting um, Sergeant Jeffrey uh, Gurin or Gurin. And I uh, hope I'm pronouncing their, your name right, sir. Uh, you know, and thank you for your service. Uh, this is a gentleman who is in the you know, U.S. Army, was uh, for the 25th Infantry Division, uh, was sent over to Iraq. And I guess he came and visited the Marvel offices after he was, you know, brought back to the States, um, injured. And uh, Steve Wacker tells a story about this soldier who was injured, who's coming into the Marvel offices, getting a tour, which they don't really, they say they don't really do too much of around this time. They weren't, you know, didn't do too much of that. But they're like, hey, for a soldier, you know, who fought for a country, absolutely he can come visit us and apparently you know when he came everyone showered him with gifts I think you know and Steve Wacker even admits like maybe it was from guilt you know maybe it's just because we're super thankful for what he sacrificed so that you know we could you know you know sleep at home you know comfortably and not worry about our kids and everything like that um, from you know from what's going on um, so he you know paid respect to this this sergeant here Jeffrey uh, Gurin and he um, he talks about how they showered him with gifts and that he stayed in touch and and that in some roundabout way this kind of story kind of pulls from their meeting with him they're, they're, they're them thinking about soldiers what happens to soldiers when they go to war and so hearing that personal element to it in the in the newsletter column really hit me like really hit me hard and when i was reading it i i almost teared up like i was like man i can't imagine you know and i i mean i've met soldiers uh, you know uh, tons of soldiers who have been injured in battles and and, and uh, come back to the states so i know what that feeling is like um but uh, but this was, you know, reading it through Steve Wacker's eyes and and talking about how that kind of was an impetus in a way for Flash, but also something they were kind of already thinking about doing anyway. So it kind of was like a perfect storm in a way um, that cuts back to the issue like that newsletter part was awesome. And I highly suggest if you pick this book up, whether you get it in digital or in print pick it up and read that newsletter page. Um, Cause in the digital copy, that's where I have it. Um, the, the newsletter is, is printed inside that as well. And it's, it's, I'm so glad they print the newsletters in there um, because uh, seeing the story was awesome. So, you know, like I said, we're in Germany. Flash is listening to the iPod. He's listening to Billy Joel. And this general of uh, Fazekas, I believe his name is, uh, shows up. And this general comes in. He's like, hey, may I sit down? And Flash, like, sure. And they start talking. And there, there is like a, a, a joke or two made, um, uh, like a dark humor joke uh, that I won't give away now because it kind of gives away Flash's situation. Uh, but 
he he you know flash makes a joke and the and the general's like oh you know is that kind of appropriate and flash like eh, whatever and you're kind of not knowing what exactly is you don't get right away that that's a joke to flash's condition so again the writing is is very well done here because you're like okay i'm following along and this is neat but what's going on and so the general's like i just i want to you know give you a, a medal of honor and flash like yeah i don't need a medal man he's like i was just doing my job and he's like i understand that you feel that way he's like but can you just, you know, and before I give you this medal, I have to just hear the story. I have to, you know, hear everything that you, you know, went through and he, and Flash like, yeah, I already told other, you know, generals and stuff like this. I already, they already know the story. He's like, yeah, but just for me personally, um, he's like, I earned my rankings in the Pentagon. You know, I'm not like an active, you know, frontline soldier that worked his way up. Um, so I just would like to hear it. And, and that way I can, you know, um, personally hand you this, uh, you know, knowing how you've earned it. And so, uh, so Flash, like, sure, let's, you know, let's recap. So he talked about how him and his squad were, um, or his unit were heading to, um, you know, a certain, you know, town, I guess, uh, where they had some intel on. Normally they would drive like in a Bradley vehicle over there, but he, or, or so he says, so he goes, uh, but we instead used the Striker ICV, I think it was. And so when they get to this uh, area, an IED goes off and it you know, blows off like a wheel of the Striker, a couple wheels of the Striker, causes it to tip over. And then they're getting, uh, they're pinned down from the top and there's, you know, soldiers uh, firing down on them. And they heard about some like drug that some of the soldiers that they were, you know, in combat with were on that was kind of enhancing their reflexes, enhancing their uh, speed a little bit. Not really a super soldier serum, but just something that just almost like cocaine in a way it was it would just give you this jolt and you didn't really feel pain and stuff um so so they had heard about that and that's kind of like one of the reasons they were in this area too was to kind of find a source of that or find some intel on that and uh, and so now that they're pinned down flash is telling the story and he's, and he's comparing it in a way to events that he knows that Spider-Man has gone through. And so the general's like, you know, do you think you were in over your head? And he's like, well, I've been in over my head before, General, and it shows the scene. And again, this is a lot of references to old Spidey stories, but Flash like, yeah, I've been in over my head before, and that never stopped me. And it shows him dressed as Spider-Man when Doctor Doom captured him, thinking he might have been Spider-Man. Um, and uh, so that was great. That was like a flashback to an old issue. Uh, then he's like, where'd you get the nickname Flash? And he was like, uh, yeah, just nowhere. And then it cuts to one panel where it shows Flash after he has had, you know, sex with a young lady in school, and uh, and she says uh, it's a, it's okay, and he's kind of like, yeah, he's like, uh, normally I I you know, he's like I, I can do better next time or something like that. So referencing that his name is he got the nickname Flash because he was like a two pump chump in high school, um, and so the, the, you know there was that, and it just all these things that I was like, wow, this really rounds out this character. This really uh, pays tribute to all these great Spider-Man stories. When you know when he's like, hey, when you guys were pinned down, you know, how did you get out of the vehicle? And he goes, well, I just you know rammed my shoulder into the door until it busted open. He's like, yeah, but those are heavy duty. You know, you know how how'd you how were you able to do that? Do you have superpowers? He's like, no. He goes, but I've just been told never to give up. And he's like, and I learned that from my greatest hero. And it shows the scene where Spider-Man from the classic you know Stan Lee story where he's like lifting the boulder up and he's like he's struggling but he, he does everything he can to like lift it up even though it looks like he's you know gonna lose that battle he wins that battle by by lifting the boulder over and then rescuing people so that was fantastic uh, there's a, a scene where um you know his his i guess commanding officer is a guy named santos and he walks over a trip line because they work their way into a building. They're getting pinned down. They're shot from above. And Flash and some of the men sneak into a building. And they're using that as cover um, from the fire and stuff. But when the building is actually rigged because uh, they were kind of forced, you know, to, to head that direction from the gunfire. So these, you know, guys that were after them, these, this, the guys they were in combat with actually, you know, knew what to do and pin them down. So they go into this building and Santos knocks over a trip wire and it, it blows up and it injures them. And the shrapnel goes into um you know flashes like think legs and then some on his arms it bruises him up pretty good uh, but some of the shrapnel sticking out of his, his thighs and stuff and uh, and it weakens him and then you know the then the enemy soldiers come in and they're you know in a, in a shootout so flash to get them away from santos because he's kind of half buried under some rubble so flash sees santos like under the rubble and he's like all right he's he's bleeding out but you know i have a few minutes i just got to get these last like six or eight soldiers away from him so flash acts as like a decoy to try to get them away from santos he tries to pin them down and you know and pick them off one by one but he doesn't have a lot of luck and they end up shooting him in the legs uh furthering damaging his legs and now you're starting to see where the story is going like, okay he's got some damage to his legs but then he crawls into a room and he finds some of those drugs um you know the drugs that they were you know looking for 
intel on and and the ones that the enemy soldiers were you know all hopped up on and so he's like look you know and he's telling the the general he's like look i'm gonna be honest with you here i took a substance over there like you know like the ones those those guys use and i did it hoping it would give me an edge to like fight back and save my my commanding officer and he's like so i'm being upfront about this like you know nothing i did was super heroic I've, I've had to kill people and i've had to do things um just to make sure we got out of there alive and he goes and these are things i'm not super proud of but i had to do it and the general's like that's fine just keep telling me the story um and then so you know flash cuts back and he takes the drug it amps him up and he's able to stand up on his legs even though they were shot and there's shrapnel in him and he's able to go and save santos and then flash was able to take out the other six or eight guys and it was pretty good i think it was six guys because the general mentions like oh it was one man against six like those are some pretty tough odds and then flash goes yeah, but I've known someone who's been up against those odds before and it, sh it cuts to Spider-Man fighting the Sinister Six. So again, you get moments, you know, like uh, of Spider-Man throughout the story because obviously it's a Spider-Man issue, but I really like that they focused it on Flash and kind of his view of Spider-Man and, and, and those moments inspiring him to continue to do the right thing because that's ultimately what Spider-Man or what Flash did. You know, he signed up for the army because of Spider-Man. He told that to, you know, Spider-Man back in the day when he went to Vietnam. He was like, you know, I signed up. He told that to Peter. He's like, I signed up because of Spider-Man because that's what he would do and peter's like no he wouldn't like i, I you know <laughs> like peter knows he's like i'm spider-man i didn't sign up for the vietnam war um i wanted to i thought maybe i could do some good but you know someone told me to stay here and, and help out and and be more you know uh helping people here uh in new york and stuff and he's like and i never went to vietnam he's like you're the real hero here flash you know so um so they earned a lot of respect from peter to you know to flash so it was cool that they had those little references and then you know at the end you know after you know he mentions sinister six and they talk about what's going on he you know he goes back and grabs santos and is able to dig him out of the rubble he still hopped up on that chemical and he grabs santos takes him outside and uh, brings him to the evac area where they get saved um, by one of their own and you know helicopters come and save them and then it cuts to back to germany where flash is in bed and he's talking to the general and the camera now has pulled back and you see you know exactly what happened to flash which is the damage to his legs was too far gone like uh, his his thighs took some damage but mostly from his knees down took most of the damage and they had to amputate both of his legs and uh and the general says you know are you you know i'm here to you know i heard your story thank you for sharing it with me i'm sorry i know that wasn't easy you know here's your medal of honor and he goes um you know and he's like again he was like you know i don't need the medal of honor to, to know I, I did the right thing and he goes why not and he goes because that's my hero would have done the same thing he goes uh, and there's like a like a cut with spider-man you know kind of over his shoulder um not really there but just kind of like the you know him thinking of spider-man um like the memory of spider-man and uh and it, it's neat and all this while he's listening to uh, an ipod uh, mix that peter parker sent to him and i was like this is really good it's just a really solid issue it shows you the gravity uh certainly of what some soldiers go through uh, as much as it can i mean obviously it's a it's a fun Spider-Man comic, uh, but it is it is um, very real at times, and uh, and the art by Barry is fantastic. And and hearing some of the situations, of course they they you know comic book it up, and they add you know the super serum or cocaine thing that the enemies were on, and then you know and then he had to take it. So there's some fantastical elements in there, but still uh, very much trying to pay tribute to the men and women who do go through stuff like this, and who do uh, have to uh, get a limb amputated or or get injured in war or you know whatever. And, and this is kind of like, in a way, a love letter to them. And, and by doing it through Flash Thompson, I thought was really great. And using a pre-existing character who has been to war before, using him to, you know, and updating him, bring him into Iraq war and showing kind of the, the you know, the horrors of that and coming back from that. I thought was really, really well done. I mean, this is a solid, solid issue uh, and it sets up where we're going to go from here because I wanted, this is what I wanted to focus on, Flash Thompson as a man and going through his history, like it was scary when I was making that video, the intro to this, like his, in the parallels of his life to my life was unreal man like it really did hit me really hard i mean if you guys saw my instagram post you'll see that i was i've been gushing about flash all week leading up to recording this episode because uh you know I didn't realize how much I, I had in common with the guy. I always looked at Eddie Brock and was like, oh, yeah, I like Eddie Brock. Um, he's, you know, we haven't been through a lot of the same things. I don't understand everything uh, Eddie's gone through. But there's a couple things where I feel like I connect with Eddie on. Flash, I was blown away by how much I connected to Flash. And, uh, and just in these issues, reading his classic stories, getting those images for you guys and sharing them, and then into this issue. Like, I was blown away uh, seeing him have memory problems, uh, being in a coma, like, 
all these things really hit me really hard and it made me love flash so much more so i can't wait the rest of the season you know we're going to talk about flash thompson he's going to be our main focus leading up to the venom 2 movie but don't worry we're, you know venom 2 movie news is our main priority but anytime we talk comics we're definitely going to focus on flash thompson there's still probably like a a week or two of Eddie Brock stories that we'll do. We'll do like Eddie Brock week and then we'll do anti-venom week. And that should wrap up all the Eddie Brock stories that we haven't touched on yet. And then I think we have one more carnage week that we'll squeeze in this season as well. And that'll catch us up on all the carnage stuff, uh, except for the stuff that's coming out right now. And again, this season, we're not going to do current reviews of any books coming out currently. We're going to focus on older comics. And then when those new comics come out in trade, we'll do full discussions on them later on when they're in trade. So I know the Ravencroft stuff's out now and the Scream stuff and Venom Island, all that stuff we'll get to, but it's going to be down the line probably after the movie comes out. Because right now I just want to focus on Flash. I'm really liking this character. We'll go back and do those older stories and we have the Maximum Venom cartoon coming up. There's going to be more merchandise this year for sure for Venom. And then we have the Venom 2 movie coming out, um, you know, starring Tom Hardy, Woody Harrelson, and Michelle Williams. So, uh, and Stephen Graham now too, and, and maybe Naomi Scott, and it's, it's growing, you know. And we have the Morbius trailer coming up, so I'll definitely do a reaction to that. We'll still cover some Morbius stuff on here. So we got a lot. We got a lot to do this season already without having to throw in you know new reviews um i don't want to focus on that this year i want to focus on the stuff that uh, led us to this point that that helped inspire um the new stories and helped inspire the movies getting made and stuff and the cartoons i want to focus more on those and leading up to maximum venom the cartoon we will talk about some previous episodes of the show that you know lay the groundwork for the lead up to those uh, episodes as well so again we got a lot going on i appreciate you all being here thank you so much for watching the show Pick up Amazing Spider-Man 574, definitely do that. And Marvel, you know, if anyone at Marvel is listening or watching, please release a Flash Thompson trade paperback of like all of his greatest hits. Like uh, all the stuff I covered in this issue, uh, in this episode, like please put them all in one trade, you know, like, a, you know, make it, make it um, like a love letter to a Agent Venom or something, you know, put from Amazing 15, put that in there, uh, put the, you know, the issue where he goes off to Vietnam, uh, put the issue where uh, Flash Thompson gets, uh, you know, the, the alcohol poured down his throat by um, by Norman Osborn, put in his uh, an issue where he, you know, falls in love with Betty Brant, his memory problems, put in that issue, uh, put this issue in there for sure, and, uh, and, you know, maybe put in his first appearance as Venom, or Agent Venom, and then maybe his last appearance from Spider-Man 700. If you put all those 10 or 12 issues into one big, cover, uh, you know, trade paperback, Please do that. That would be so awesome. I know a lot of us would really like that. So let me know what you guys think. Have you read Amazing Spider-Man 574? Are you caught up now in the history of, uh, you know, of, of our friend here, Flash Thompson? I hope so, because, you know, after this episode, we are going to dive right into what comes next. All right. He has, you know, lost his legs now. He's coming back to the U.S. We're going to talk about that story where he sees Peter Parker coming when he comes back to the U.S. for the first time. We're going to talk about that in an upcoming episode, along with his first you know, outing as Agent Venom, and I'm very excited to get to it. So thank you so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.